Would you prefer to have your clients sign their contracts electronically? Let me show you how with JotForm Sign. Hey JotFormers, welcome back. I'm Kimberly and I am currently in the desktop version of my dashboard. So the first thing you want to do is go up to the top left hand corner. We're going to choose my forms. Then we're going to click on my sign documents. Next, we're going to click the green create sign document button. And if you already have a PDF version of your contract, you can always use the upload document option. But for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use a template. Now, if you're utilizing the template option and you have an idea of what you're looking for, you can always utilize the search option at the top. But for this over on the left hand side, I'm going to go ahead and click on contract to see if we can find one that fits what we're looking for. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and utilize this very first one, the house rental agreement. And before I do anything, I always like to take a quick scroll just to see what I'm working with. So right here we can see two different colors. This lets me know that two people are going to be required to sign this. Now, if we click on any of the fields, we can see that we have me and the tenant. So the tenant is going to be in blue. We can go ahead and scroll down and we can see both signatures at the bottom. Perfect. If this template is missing something that you want to add in, if you're familiar with the JotForm form builder, the adding fields is very similar. So over on the left hand side, if we click add fields, we can see what we need to bring in. Let's say we need an email and we want it right up here at the top. You can see as soon as I let it go, the properties panel on the right hand side populated and we can do a lot of things here. We can change the field assigning maybe to me. We can also change the label. We can make it required or not. And then we also have a couple more options up here at the top. But for me, I don't need it. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of this. So let's head up to the tabs. Let's go ahead and check out the settings tab. This is where we can change the document title. If you want to change the email subject, we can do that. We can also put a message. Let's just go ahead and sign, please sign ASAP. If you have any integrations you want to utilize, you can do that here. The send tab is where the magic happens though. So we can see it already has me as the quote unquote landlord sending this contract. So we need the tenant's information. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that now. Now to the right of every person, you're going to see these two icons. We have a key and a message icon. The key is if you want someone specific to have a passcode or a password, I'm going to go ahead and put this one as one, two, three. And then the message icon, this is going to send a message to just this one person in the settings tab where it said, please sign ASAP. That's going to go to everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to let this person know that the passcode is one, two, three. Now we can see since this person has a passcode and a message, both are now blue. Now we do have some extra options. If you want an expiration date, reminder emails, signer delegation, you can do that under the options tab. But just for an example, if I send to sign right now, my tenant and myself are going to get this document at the same time. And that is not what I want to happen. I want to get this first so I can pre-fill it out. Then when I'm done, it'll go to my tenant. In order to do that, we need to turn on the signing order, which is right here. So now we can see the tenant is number one, I'm number two, and we also have these dots. I can move me up to the top. So this will just go in order. Even if we have more signers, it'll go in order of who signs when. So I think we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and send a sign. And we can see here who it went to and also who has a passcode. So let's go ahead and jump over to the emails and see what this looks like for both parties. All right, so we are in my email and we can see the general message, please sign ASAP. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the review and sign document button. And we can see we have 29 fields and it dropped down to 24 because it's gonna go ahead and pre-populate some of those fields for me. So we can see the name right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down. Looks like all of the required ones already have my name. So I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom. Now with the signature field, it is really neat. So if we click on it, we can go ahead and click next and sign it like this. But if you wanna change things up, you can do that too. We can change the style of how it looks. We can change the color. Or if you wanna go ahead and draw your signature, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click sign and complete and then accept and send. And let's jump to my tenant's email. So here we can see that general message, please sign ASAP, but we also have the private message to me as the tenant as one, two, three. So let's go ahead and click the review and sign document button. And we have our passcode one, two, three, then validate. And it shows up here. We had five fields drop down to three because it's going to pre-populate for us. Perfect. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. We'll do the same thing and I'll go ahead and leave it like this and assign and complete and accept and send. 
Now let's head back over to Jotform. And one thing I want you to definitely take notice of is up at the top where it says sign builder. If we change this over to inbox, we can see that we have a bunch of tabs across the top. So whenever we sent it, it was in waiting for signature. Once we finished, it jumped over to waiting for others. And now it's going to live in completed. And if we take a quick scroll, we can see we have the normal document, but then we also have an audit trail. So we get to see where this went and when and how long it took in between all of those phases. But it's as simple as that. If you have any questions about having your clients sign electronic contracts, let us know and I'll see you next time.